well, friends, hello. Um, I was just saying that it's uh, uh, always a good day when we start by being surrounded by family, as I feel I am right at this moment, family from all over the world. Um, my name is Reva Joshi. I'm coming to you today from Edmondson, Alberta, Canada. Um, and I want to begin with a, a land acknowledgement, as we do in, in Canada. Um, Edmonton is on Treaty 6 territory and part of the Métis Nation of Alberta Region 4. It's the traditional territory of many First Nations, including Nihaugyu, uh, Dene Sulne, Nakota Sioux, Anishinaabe, and Nitsitapi. We're grateful to all of the generations who have taken care of this land and made it possible for us to um, thrive here today. I want to thank you for joining us, and um, we expect others to join us as we continue today. Um, the, this is a teach-in. A teach-in is a little bit different than the kind of webinars that you might be used to, um, in the sense that it is meant to be a little more fluid, a little more interactive. It's meant to give you an opportunity, give us all an opportunity to hear from um, people who are engaged in uh, work, in our case, and work for peace. Um, and we think about this in terms of, of being part of a complex topic that you will hear about from a number of different perspectives. Today's teaching addresses specifically education for peace. And the big question I think that we are all trying to address is how can we work toward creating cultures and societies of peace? We're doing this in part because global attention has once again been focused on the horrors of war because of the war in Ukraine. But I, for one, have been increasingly um, concerned that the focus has been so strongly on uh, military spending. We, uh, an increasing military spending is the only solution to what has been going on. Um, I think this is short-sighted. And although I, I acknowledge the importance of supporting the people of Ukraine uh, through all possible means, I think in terms of the long term, what we need to be doing is thinking about how do we build a peaceful future? Today, you'll hear from educators and activists from around the world. And in addition to the live presentations, which have been designed to be as interactive as possible, um, we are also going to have a number of short clips from um, the season one of the Speaking Our Peace podcast. And you'll hear a little bit more about that in a little while. Uh, again, I thank you all for joining us. Uh, and we will, I think, begin um, by uh, inviting uh, our dear Rajaji, Raj Gopal, to, uh, uh, to address us. Now, for those of you who don't know him, he is one of the leaders of the uh, Jai Jagat movement. And he's a person who uh, has really dedicated his whole life to creating peace and justice. Um, we're very lucky to have him with us today. And I offer him the uh, opportunity to um, uh, address the group and, and welcome everybody here. Rajaji? Yes, uh, Reva Ben, thank you, thank you very much. I am, I'm in a rural area of uh, Karnataka, that is the southern part of India, and uh, as a result, maybe uh, my connectivity may not be so good, but I am trying, and I hope everybody can hear me from here. Right. So, uh, I'm I'm thankful to you for inviting me today. And this is a great honor that um, I get an opportunity to talk to all of you. Uh, a great concern for all of us, you know, the kind of um, kind of violence, the scale of violence in Ukraine is a, is a great concern for all of us. Whenever there is a huge catastrophe case like that, uh, we feel concerned and uh, sometimes really don't know how to engage. 
in such a situation. Uh, but I thought uh, I should come back to you with a small story in which I was involved uh, some years back, because this is not about uh, a theory, this is about practice, that when there is problem, how do we address it? So it, many years back, when I was 23, uh, we were invited to a region called Chambal in the central part, northern part of India. And Chambal region is cutting across Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, and uh, Uttar Pradesh. And this is where we had too many bandits. You know, bandits are those like Robin Hood's killing, kidnapping, robbery. So the region was in complete violence and people didn't know what to do with it. It was happening for many years. And that was a time when a group of young people thought something need to be done. And we began a small center there to initiate some action. But the response was very negative. We began to work and the first thing was a huge attack on our center and a warning that you should get out of this place. But as young people, we could stay on. I mean, we, we didn't get frightened by this threat. What we understood, this is what I want to bring today in teaching. Uh, what we learned is that sometimes the violence is so big, so difficult that you cannot enter in it, into this directly. So what do you do? You need to work from the periphery. So this approaching, approaching violence from the periphery was something that we learned at that point of time. And then we said, okay, this is a, this is a really difficult place, killing, counter killing, kidnapping, uh, ransom. So we can't directly go to people and say, look, end violence. Uh, so we began to work with young people, motivating young people to get into other kinds of activities. We started creating peace groups in different villages and uh, organizing youth training programs and youth camps for construction of village roads, etc., And all that led to creating a kind of an atmosphere where a dialogue began with, um, with the underground groups uh, to, to cut the long story short. And this relationship with young people, the villagers and the women in that area led to communicating with the relatives who are, who are underground underground and then uh, the dialogue began in 1972 a mass surrender happened mass surrender of weapons happened in the very place where we were attacked in 1970 so imagine two years of work but then we continued for another eight years for uh, the surrender rehabilitation of these people uh, educating their children etc etc now what is the story? The story is that there can be violence, uh, huge violence. But if a, a strategic planning is done, uh, probably you, you, you can come to the core only through the, through the periphery. And when I see violence in different parts of the world and people feeling very concerned about how to deal with it, uh, I think it cannot be a concern when there is violence because when there is fire, uh, it is it's very difficult to move into the fire. So can we constantly engage in, in building this periphery, young people, peace groups, so that when, when there is a problem, we are able to deal with it. So the lesson from, as a, as a, as a welcome note, what I wanted to say is lesson from this, this action was that we want to realize that this is going to happen. It can be Myanmar, etc. yesterday and today in Ukraine and maybe Ethiopia, this is going to happen every day in a world where people are wanting to sell piled up arms. You know, they, they need conflict and violence to, to make money. So let us realize that this is going to happen in different parts of the world uh, every day. The question is, are we ready? Uh, rather than being concerned about it when violence erupts, can we start preparing for it uh, all over? through young people and through social organizations, et cetera, et cetera. And my request is also today in this inaugural note is that like people who are spreading violence, promoting violence are 
investing in research, investing in innovation. Uh, the people who want to create peace should also start investing in research, innovation, and action. Uh, it cannot be only when there is, there is fire that we get concerned. We need to understand this is going to happen, so we need to have the preparatory work happening almost every day. So through this teaching process, what uh, my friend uh, Dr. Reva Joshi is doing, Reva Behan is doing, I think uh, we need to get a larger group of people across the globe ready to act, not for today, telling that, look, tomorrow, day after tomorrow, something, something is op, hap, going to happen. So we need to prepare the ground today. And that is what we tried in Chambal region of uh, India. And we, we are repeating it in many other places and the results are very, very interesting and positive. So I hope Ukraine may look very difficult today, but maybe a Georgia, uh, uh, Abarsia will begin tomorrow. Are we ready for it? Uh, can, we, can we prepare ourselves to deal with the coming conflicts and problems in the world? Will be something very, very important for us to think and network across the globe to deal with emerging problems. So with that note, on the way uh, in, a, in a forest, I'm lucky that I got this connectivity. I want to thank everyone who is participating in this process and I wish all the best because this teaching process is going to involve a lot of people, interesting people in taking this agenda forward. Thank you very much, Rehab, Reva Ben and everybody else in the group. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rajaji. That was so, um... Uh, such wonderful words and, and an important reminder of that process that you uh, conducted in, in Shambhal.